Okay, we'll go ahead and dive right on in. The first thing we need to talk about is synchronization. Once you have the app installed from the Android Marketplace, you'll tap on Desktop Sync, and it will show you at the top, Pairing Not Established. Now we've got it. 3728. So now what I do is I go back to Total, and you can do this in WinTotal or Total 2011, which is what I'm using here. You basically pick, or you can of course create, a folder. Right click on a folder, and choose Pair It, and let's see, 3728, and I butterfingered it of course. And the other thing that you have to choose is whether or not you're going to use your own personalized quick lists from within the desktop software or if you're going to use the ones that are built in to Total for Mobile. I'll choose Pair and then I'll do a synchronization. So back at the device I'm going to tap the back button and you'll notice now that it's established. I'll go ahead and choose Synchronize now to synchronize all of these files. I've got some on my device here along with synchronizing my quick lists and my form layouts, any changes that I might have made there. And I'll just tap the back button to get to our main screen. Let's talk now about where to start your reports. You can obviously start them on the mobile device itself or you can start them from within the desktop software just like you do now and drag that file into this shared folder here. My recommendation is to do it that way. The reason is very simple. Most of you are going to be using Excite. You're going to be using templates that you've created inside of Total or WinTotal. And so it's much easier to make use of them from within the desktop software, quite honestly. Especially those of you that do Excite work. You have to deliver via certain plugins. You know that when you download a report from the X site and you work on it and then deliver it, that report that's in WinTotal has an order association with the X site. And you don't want to break that association. And if you start a report on the mobile device and you have the report already in your desktop software with the order association then you're gonna to have to do some merging back and forth of data and then of course you're gonna have the duplicate files and you're gonna you can always run into problems that way so my recommendation is is just go ahead and create your reports within the file cabinet on the desktop and drag them and drop them into your folder so for instance I've got this report right here which I will drag straight into the Galaxy folder like this. And now I'll do a synchronization. And now we're back to the device. I'll tap Desktop Sync. Synchronize now. So I'll back up to the main screen. For those of you that do want to start your reports on the device, you tap Create New File, you give it a description. In this case, I'm going to name mine the address. And for my layout, I'm going to choose the UAD version of the 1004 and then I'll tap create file which pulls it open. Now at the top you have order, data, comps, photos, and sketch. You also have another menu down here at the bottom for your file, your voice notes, field pad, field notes, and so forth. We're just going to work our way through each of these. For now I'm going to tap city and type in some data. So I can type Yukon and I'll go to the state and tap OK. Then I'll scroll up and for the zip I'll tap 7309 or 9. -er. Notice there is a piece here called Map and Geodata 
and this is useful not just for your subject property but also for your um, comparables were you to have any comparables as well you can see a map here of of your property and so forth In the lower right hand corner you tap that to get the satellite view and the lower left hand corner there's a button for data you tap data and you can essentially tell the program look when you get the map later on use my current GPS position this will be useful for those of you with mobile phones and with devices that have a current always on GPS cell phone connection 3G and so forth All right, let's go to the data tab and you can see that in the data tab I have several of my different sections if I tap on neighborhood I can see this information in here now for the neighborhood most of you probably won't put in a whole bunch of information in here we include this simply because if you filled it out already uh, in the in the report in the desktop you'll be able to see this information in here things like the boundaries and the description and you can of course make comments should you want to do so and in fact I'm gonna tap into that field for my comments and I want to show you a feature that is specific to the Android OS it's not available on every device those of you who have the Kindle Fire you know there's no microphone on it I will tap this icon right here these are my comments and descriptions for market conditions and it will write it out for me right onto the screen the back button then to go back to the main sections of the data tab where I can then tap on something like improvements you'll notice I can just tap to check any of these boxes scroll down and get the slab the foundation I'll tap into and I'll put something in like concrete and exterior walls maybe brick veneer and obsolete notice I'm tapping over here on the left hand side I'm tapping on the actual name of it so I can have access to my quick lists so you can tap into a field to use it or you can tap on the left and I also believe on the right tapping on the far right also gets you your quick lists as well there is a section here called room analysis where you can add a room like a bedroom or a bathroom you can make your notations and even take a picture which will then save into a one of the three photo interior pages but I'm going to cover room analysis in the sketch I think it makes a little bit more workflow sense there so we'll cover it there there is a critical items list and all of these lists by the way are you can modify them from within the desktop It'll be one of the last things that I show so you can scroll up and down and this acts really as a checklist for you as you are getting ready to leave the field you just run through and make sure that you filled everything out that you intended to fill out it's a checklist and we call them critical items so I'll back out of that let's go to the comps tab at the top if you have synchronized this report from an existing report on a, on a computer obviously this one I created from scratch but if you had comparables in the report on the desktop you would see them in here including addresses and, and information and so forth and you can also take your photos of the comparables let me go ahead and add a comparable manually I'll just put in an address and I won't even finish filling it out let's go to photos now depending on your device you may or may not have a camera those of you who have a Kindle Fire you know there's no camera on that device um, I'm a big fan of the camera that is on the Samsung Galaxy devices uh, even the some of the older ones the 10.1 which is the one I'm using right now takes fantastic pictures you tap on take photo which turns the camera on take a picture of what is behind take a picture of my nice beautiful hand right there 
I'll tap save, which is essentially telling it to use it. And then if I scroll down, it will ask me, okay, what type of picture is this? Is this front, interior, rear, or street? So that we know. And then you can add or modify a description as well down at the bottom. When I tap back, you'll notice it's been saved now. To do the sketch, you tap the sketch button in the upper right hand corner. And my assumption here is that most of you have seen the, or are familiar with, Total Sketch, which is the sketching software that's built into both WinTotal Aurora and Total 2011. If you haven't actually worked with it, my recommendation would be to watch the video that I have made where I sat down and created a, a sketch from beginning to end, a rather complicated sketch showing the various ways to do angles and curves and so forth. I'm going to essentially redraw that sketch. If you will, in look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see that these are your modes. There's the draw exterior walls, draw interior walls. The uh, finger pointer is uh, indicative of modify mode. And then this one right here is called place cursor, which is specific to our mobile devices, which you must click in order to actually, as you might, might assume, place your cursor. So I'll tap exterior walls, then tap place cursor, and, and now this is where I am. So let me draw a 15-foot wall to the right. I'll type 1-5, and you can see in the upper right-hand corner it shows me that I have 15. And I'll just swipe on the screen to the right and tap to lock it into place. I'll do 9.8, swipe down, and tap to lock it into place. I'll mention while I'm doing this that First of all, you can use the keyboard over here on the side. Um, also, I am a big fan of the way Samsung, and I'm, I know some of the others do as well, but Samsung Galaxies um, vibrate slightly um, as you put something into the into the um, into the pad here. It slightly vibrates against your fingers, so and, and essentially lets me know that that input has been properly made. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let's do an angled wall. As I mentioned earlier, there are two and only two ways to accurately measure and then draw an angled wall in the field. The first is using rise and run. I'm going to do a bay window that juts out here to the side onto the right, and I'm going to use rise and run. So let's say my rise is 3, and I measured my run at 4. Of course, if it were just a 45 degree angle, that'd be easy. I'd measure the, I'd measure the length of the wall and then use the the corner arrows to draw the 45 degree angle. However, it's not a 45 degree angle because my rise and run do not match exactly. So rather than break out my miter gauge or my protractor and measure the angle, I'm just going to measure rise and run. It sticks out three feet and sticks across three feet. Very easy to measure with your tape, obviously. Many of you do this every day. I'm going to tap three, swipe right, I am not going to tap to anchor it. I will now tap 4 and swipe down and tell it to go in that direction. Now the angle is where I want it so I can tap to lock it into place. Let me hit the backspace key to back up and do that again. Or the delete key, excuse me. I'll tap 3, swipe right, tap 4, and swipe down, and then tap to lock it into place. We go ahead and go down 10 feet, and we'll talk about pop points. Just like the desktop software, pop points are very useful for squaring things off and making sure that things line up. And just like the desktop software, you can use your arrow keys over here in the lower left-hand corner to line up. I am, however, just going to tap directly on the point where I want it to go. Let me go down 10 feet. Go left 15 and up 15 and then I'll zoom in and we'll talk about another angled wall. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an angle wall off to the side about like this. So let me swipe 20 feet to the left here and lock that into place. Now that I've locked it into place I'm going to go to modify mode which again is that 
little icon at the top with the finger pointer. And if I tap on either side of the line, you'll notice that I'm able to change the angle or the length. Notice, however, depending on which side you tap on, it changes your fulcrum for that line. So what I'm going to do here is tap on this side to put my fulcrum over here on the right, which is where it needs to go. Then I can come up and I can dial in the angle that I want. Say I measured the angle at 127 degrees. I can literally dial that in. And when I'm done, I tap outside to anchor that. Remember that is done from here using modify mode. I can then go back to drawing my outside walls, but don't forget to tap place cursor first at the top. And I'll go 25 feet this way. Actually, let's go 35 feet or 38 feet that way. Now I'm going to close an area. My recommendation for closing your areas is always to use the pop points. If you're off by sometimes even uh, as little as less than or just a little bit more than or less than a foot, then it won't close. Now it will ask you what the area type is and it says first floor that's checked so all I have to do is click OK and you'll notice it automatically goes ahead and tells me how much square footage I have for that first floor. Let's do a cutout area now. What I'm going to do here is take this area in the middle and I'm going to cut it out as a garage. We're going to do this in the exact same way that we did in the video of Total Sketch where I cut out the garage. It's the same functionality just done using the mobile device. Exterior walls, place cursor, and I'll tap to place that there. I'll go down six feet this way, and then I will round off using pop points. A single tap there, and a single tap there, and now it's asking me, is this a two-car attached garage? If it is, great. If it's not, I can scroll down and I can say, nope, that's really a one-car attached and then click OK. Let's come over here to the side. Now that I showed how to do an area that's a cutout, let's show an additional outside area that works um, outside of something you've already drawn. I'm going to do a porch and this will give me also an opportunity uh, just like in the video to draw an arc. Again, exterior walls, place cursor, tap where I want to go. I'll do 10 feet, swipe right, and this time I'm going to do a 13 foot wall at a 45 degree angle like that. You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and round that off, close the area. And I'm doing this so that you know you can actually come back and change this even if the area itself is closed. Now this 13 foot wall here that I drew, this is actually a curved wall. Now remember for angles to dial in the, um, the angle of incidence, you have to be in modify mode. Same thing here for arcs. Remember with angles you tapped on either side of the line. With an arc if you tap right in the middle, you can dial in your arc height. Not many of you measure the chord length or the arc height, which is actually usually fairly difficult to measure. So most of the time this is just guesstimation and you make it just look right. Very helpful in those instances. When you're done, you tap out. Again, in modify mode, you tap right in the middle of a line to change the arc height. I'll do it on this 25 foot wall here. I'll tap right in the middle. And there you have it. Let's cover some of the other things in here. In the upper right hand corner you have the ability to do extra pages. Should you need to add a second page you can do that. And you can toggle between your existing pages using that function as well. If you have areas that are already closed you can tap the I and see your calculations. If you're in modify mode and you tap on an area to select the area You'll notice I just single tap on the garage. If I need to make that a two-car attached garage, I can tap on area at the top. 
scroll down to find the one for which I'm looking, tap on it and tap OK and it is now a two car attached garage. To move an area you tap and hold, move it out like that. For second floors you may notice that you can now after you've selected an area like the first floor if you want to make a copy of it you tap and hold on the area that's selected and you say copy area. I can then go to page two for instance tap and hold and say paste area. Of course I don't want to call it first floor I want to call it uh, second floor but now I can come in here and I can make my changes to my second floor. I can tap on lines and remove them and redraw things as necessary. Your labels are in the upper right hand corner. So I can tap bedroom and put it up here. Put that one there. And of course, even custom labels, like here's one for Bat Cave that we've made, put that one over there. At any point, you can, in modify mode, you can double tap on a bedroom or a bathroom to do your room analysis. This is what I was mentioning earlier, where you can come in and make your notations about what's in a bedroom or a bathroom, including taking a picture of it and having a comment section about it as well. You tap back to get out of it, and I, again, just double tap on bath to make my notations. Upper right hand corner are my symbols. Go ahead and do a 90 degree door here, right on the screen. Just tap to, to place it. You can rotate any symbol, and you can scale any symbol once it's been selected just at the top. You dial in how big or how small you want it to be and whether or not you want it to rotate, if it needs to be rotated. Let's do a fireplace corner. And you can tap and drag and move these things around as well. So I've selected it and I can tap and move the thing around as necessary. Place it right where I want to place it. Not as beautiful as I thought it'd be. There we go. When you're done you just tap outside of the sketch <clears throat> and what you've selected is no longer selected. Michael is asking me to show redrawing lines on the second floor. Michael, I'm sure I'm I'm I wonder if you're talking about going to the second floor and modifying it, for instance. Um, I I can demonstrate that, sure. So I'm in modify mode, and I can take out that line and that line, that line. I take out a few lines here. Now when I'm ready to start redrawing, I have to go to my draw mode and place my cursor. Looks like I'm not getting it right on. There we go. So then I can go it's 10 feet, swipe that direction, and close out that way again using pop points. You just go in and modify just by deleting lines and then redrawing them. Just remember you're uh, at the top that you've got to go to draw outside walls and then hit place cursor. Back. I think that's everything I needed to cover here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap back and I can go to any piece that I want to now. I can go back to data and it's all saved. There's no file save or anything like that here for the sketch. So I can jump around and do whatever I need to do. Also down at the bottom you have other options like voice notes. I can record my voice like this and then of course it makes my note for me. 
Recording, recording, recording. Also down here is my field pad. This is like a sheet of white paper on which you can draw. If you use a stylus, it makes it very easy to make some actual notes right on the screen. But this is an image and it will come into the software as an image as well. You have field notes which this would be a good place to make really good use of the speech to text feature if your device has that option with the microphone. You also have maps and directions so if you have a property in here or if you have comparables already you can actually get your maps to the locations down at the bottom. Now for saving You do not necessarily need to come in here and hit save and close. You literally can just click back and it will save the report for you automatically. There's no real reason to go through the whole save procedure. There is a reason to go through the desktop sync, so I'll go ahead and choose that now. Upload that report and then I can hop to total and synchronize that report now. Now I'll open this report. Let's see where everything went. Go to the improvement section. Remember I checked a few boxes here and used my quick lists. So obviously if there's data for the forms, it will go straight into the forms. Your sketch goes into the sketch power view. Obviously, I moved this around earlier to show you, but you can put it back or whatever you need to do there. And you can make any sort of changes to the sketch that you need to make. Anything that you would normally make on the desktop software, you can now make here manually. Everything else goes in one of two places depending on which software you have. If you use WinTotal Aurora, this will be in your digital work file. In total, it's under the Report Attachments screen double click on any of these audio files to open them up. You double click on the field note to open it up as well. This is again an image just like you'd scanned in your handwritten notes. And the field data which is text indicating that these are the pieces of data that came in from the field. So this will always be here regardless of if you go into the form and make changes. This is the data that was there in the field when, it, when you came back from the field and did your sync. That's where all the data goes, is in the report attachments under tools. In WinTotal Aurora, again, it's in the digital work file.